Hi Flagstaff, my name is Jackie Richwine. I'm the Guest Services Coordinator at the City of Flagstaff Aquaplex and I'm excited to see you all today. Um, though I run customer service at the City of Flagstaff Aquaplex, one of my main passions in life is actually art. I actually have an art degree from Northern Arizona University that focuses in art and art history. So today I'd like to go through with you today some virtual programming that focuses on painting. Sounds good, right? Okay, so today I'm gonna to show you how to paint this photo behind me. Now this is actually a photo of a painted piece. It's just a photo of some dandelions that are blowing away in the wind. So, wanna make a wish with me? Cool. So before we get started, um, we're gonna go through some of the basic supplies that you guys should need to have at home to achieve this. Hopefully you will not need to go out to the store and get anything. First thing you're gonna need is of course some paper. I'm using watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is nice and thick and it prevents the paint from absorbing through the paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, no big deal. You can use whatever paper you have at home. Um, I like to have multiple different kinds of brushes when I'm painting. These are just standard paint brushes that you can get from the hardware store. So if you have any laying at home, Great. These are actually acrylic paint brushes. Um, you, if you have regular paint brushes, like if you came with a watercolor set or just paint brushes that you use for regular painting, that's great too. Paper towels, you're gonna use this to block paint off your paint brushes if you have any excess. You're gonna need some Q-tips. Sounds odd, but you're gonna need them for this painting. You're going to need a hair tie. You are going to need a small tub or cup of water, just plain water. And then you're going to need your paint. The paint I'm using today is called acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is really great because it's pretty much like liquid plastic. It dries really, really quickly and it's pretty easy to use. You spread it with the use of water and it's pretty easy to mix. There are other types of paint. There's water-based paint and there's oil paints. Um, if you don't have acrylic paint in your house, no worries. Um, you're not gonna be able to achieve this painting with spray paint or puff paint, but you can definitely do it with um, water-based paint, like Crayola paint at your house. Okay, um, and then you're gonna want a pla paper plate. What I'm using the paper plate for today is a palette, okay? Um, you probably have seen artists or um, watched movies where there's an artist and they're using a palette and that's what they grab their paint off of. Probably in those movies, it's been like a, a metal palette or wood palette, um, but I like to just use paper plates. It's super easy um, and a great way to lay your paint out. Okay, um, we're gonna use a couple different colors today. All the colors that we're using today are what is actually found in the picture we're going to be painting. We're using titanium white. This is ivory black. Yellow okra. Candom yellow light. Candom yellow medium. Ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, Pluto blue, Pluto green, sap green, and peppermint green light. If you don't have all those colors, no worries. Because the super cool thing about paint and color is if you have the primary colors like red, green, or red, um, red, yellow, and blue, you can actually make a lot of the other colors. So I'm going to show you how to do that today as well. Okay, you guys ready to get started? Great. So what we're going to do first is make sure we have our paper oriented the correct way. So we're gonna have our paper oriented in the landscape fashion. So that means we want the long side to be pointed towards the side walls. Um, kids in school, you might've heard this as hot dog length. Um, 
when but when you're talking about it in art or photograph um, terms, this is actually landscape. If we had our paper turned this way, it's portrait. You might have heard that style called hamburger. But so landscape, portrait. Cool. Awesome. All right. Let's start laying out some of our colors. Use a brand new paint. So. Ooh. Need to open some of them. Oh, already open. Just kidding. Okay. When you're doing this, you actually don't need to put a lot. Okay. I'm just going to put like a quarter size amount to start with. If you get some on your hands, it's cool. I say if you don't got paint on your hands, you're not painting. You're gonna just do a little quarter size amount of each one, okay? Make sure you're not putting your um, paint little droplets too close together so they're not mixing. So as I said, we, we're gonna mix some colors later, but we don't necessarily want them to mix together right now. I always, when I'm filling up my palette, um, put all my actual colors of paint around the outside, and then I will put my white and black on the inside of my palette. Because I tend to, when I'm making my color, um, my paintings, use more white than anything else to blend and um, create different colors. So I like to have the space for those colors. Okay, so I have my colors around the outside. I'm gonna use, a, I'm gonna make a larger dab of white. I'm going to probably make this dab closer to like a silver dollar size. Black, I'm going to probably make it closer to a penny size. The reason I do black in a smaller size is because black is such a potent color. A little goes a long way. It's going to make, a, if you add it to another color, it's going to change that color dramatically. Ta da All right, you guys ready to start painting? All right, so we're actually gonna start here at the bottom of our paper, and we're gonna start with just this sweeping kind of um, paint strokes. Now, I know in the photo, you see these like grass strokes that are kind of coming up, but underneath that, there is a lighter green. And that lighter green looks like this peppermint green light, okay? Now, underneath this paper plate, I have another one. So I can show you really quickly how if you don't have green right away, you can mix it. So I'm gonna show you that first, okay? I'm gonna get my brush wet real quick. And then I'm gonna dip it in my cobalt blue. And I'm gonna put it here. on this plate. Clean my brush out really good. When you're between colors, you always want to clean your brush so that it doesn't contaminate your other colors because then it makes it really hard if you want a clean yellow color or a clean blue color to have to do that if you're not cleaning your brushes. Next, I'm going to grab my um, Canary yellow light, and I'm gonna, with my clean brush, dip it in there, and then I'm gonna add it to this blue. And as you can see, as I mix it, those two primary colors, yellow and blue are primary colors, are making a green. Now, that's definitely a pretty dark green, right? We want a lighter green. Okay, so I would clean out my brush. Make sure it's nice and clean. 
Wipe the water off on the side. Oops, I'm sorry guys. You can see. Get my clean brush and the white. Okay, now I'm gonna add that white. to the green. And voila, you have a lighter green. So that's how you mix the primary color blue and yellow to make green. Adding white will make it a lighter green. If you added black to it, it's gonna make it a darker green. Just remember, black is very potent. Very, very small amount is going to go very, very far. All right, but I think that we can just start with the colors that we actually have on hand in our palette. And we're gonna start with the lighter green that we have um, in our actual palette. And we're gonna go with this peppermint green here. Okay, so I got it here. And we're gonna sweep here. Nice long brush strokes. Adding water to your brush, which is gonna spread that paint. If you need more paint, grab some. It's your piece, whatever you want to do. So remember, as I said, acrylic paint is kind of like um, liquid plastic. It dries really, really quickly. Um, there's a lot of benefits to that. It is um, really helpful if you make a mistake because it's really easy to correct that mistake. Um, but it also means that um, once the paint's on, it's on. So you can't necessarily go back and change something um, without going back over it a ton. See, as I said, see that paint is kind of already starting to dry there. And you use that water. The more water I add, the more diluted the paint is gonna become. And the more I can spread it. The next color, as you can see in our photo, the sweeping motion that I've got going on in kind of an upward arch is a light yellow. Out of our palette, this is going to be that light canary yellow we've got. Okay, so I'm gonna actually use one of my acrylic brushes for this one. Okay, nice and long. Get my brush wet. Dip into that light canary yellow and apply it directly here. You don't like the way a different brush feels go ahead and go back to the one you had or try a different one as i said i like to paint with a lot of different kinds of brushes because i think that different brushes give a piece of art different textures and different feels um and make your piece unique in lots of different ways i'm going to go back to this one to help with um some blending I'm gonna get some more paint. Don't be afraid to layer your colors. So laying the yellow color over the green color. And 
adding water. I'm going to spread this yellow up here just a little bit more. So you can see we've got that nice, good yellow bridge. Okay. How's everyone doing so far? Feel free to paint along with me or watch this video at home and paint on your own. Great, okay, so the next step I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to add in some blue here. Now, the blues we have are a little bit darker, so we're gonna have to add some white, okay? So, I'm going to use our cobalt blue, this blue right here. It's the blue we used when we were demonstrating how to make the mixing of a green out of our primary blue and our yellow, okay? So, we're gonna take a little bit of this cobalt blue, we're going to just apply, okay, clean our brush, okay. Now when I'm dipping right here, I'm dipping it on my, I'm cleaning like my brush on my paper towel, just to kind of get any leftover blue that was left over on my brush. Then I'm going to take some white and I'm going to lay it over, okay, kind of big strokes of white. And then I'm going to dip my brush in this water, and then I'm going to spread it. Again, don't be afraid to overlay your colors just a little bit so that they blend nicely. And what that does, guys, is it prevents your colors from looking like a block of just green, yellow, blue. Now, I know that, that ours kind of looks like that right now, but once we're done, it's not going to look like that, as bad. Um, we're going to do some more blending and a little bit of different things to create that dy um, dimension that you're, you're looking for. If you need a little bit more blue, or you want more blue in your sky, yeah, don't be afraid to add some. Remember, you want to keep that upward. We're still doing this arching kind of motion with our strokes. It's creating that half moon kind of stroke. A crescent is what that shape is called. I'm going to get a little bit more blue. Don't be afraid to paint with your other hand too. I always find it really fun and interesting to paint with my non-dominant hand. And what I mean by non-dominant is the hand that you don't write with, or the one you don't typically use when you're eating with a utensil. 
Um, because it's just a really interesting experiment. It, it kind of lets you um, see where your strengths and weaknesses are and experiment a little bit. I'm actually gonna to move to a little bit bigger of a brush right now to help spread out my paint. Oops. I'm gonna grab some white, a little bit of water, and move. Get this rolling. All right, okay, so we have our two, our three kind of layers so far. Now, what we're gonna do, as you can see in this top portion, is a slightly darker blue. We're gonna add that in now, okay? For this, we're gonna actually use our ultramarine blue, and that's this blue right here. So, I'm gonna still use my big brush, grab that. It's okay that I haven't cleaned my brush for this one, because I'm going to be blending it in pretty well. Right now I'm going back and adding to that cobalt blue right here to blend in some more and even out those edges, kind of bringing up my crescent just a little bit more. Oops. Important thing when you're doing this is though acrylics does spread with water, you do want to make sure that you're not using too much water. Because if you do, it can cause you to get water lines through your piece. And what that, what I'm referring to is when you have a water line, it's where a, a drop of water is kind of dripped down your piece. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be kind of distracting in a piece if that's not what your intention is. Okay, so some here's more cobalt. Remember, cobalt blue is what we were using down here. I'm tightening up that, that crescent, okay. Okay, I'm gonna grab some more ultramarine and pull it here. You see the difference between those two colors? One's just slightly darker, blending those together. Again, using my non-dominant hand. I'm also using a technique right now called dry brushing. I don't really have any water on my brush right now. Um, and that creates a cool texture um, on the piece. Awesome. Okay, now, as I told you, acrylics dries really quickly. So, touching it, no paint. 
Pretty cool, right? Okay, so we're gonna go back and I'm gonna add in a little bit more blending, but this time I'm gonna add in a little bit of a darker yellow. Okay, this time I'm still using canary yellow, but I'm gonna use this medium version. Okay, add a little bit of water, blending it off through here to create that blending effect. Pulling it all the way up through. Tiny bit of water. And down through here. Now, don't be surprised if my piece and your piece doesn't look exactly like the piece that's in this photo. It's not supposed to be. Um, art is really based off the individual. Um, and imitation is the most, um, the best fo uh, form of flattery. Um, but I really like to see pieces that are individual and unique. So even if you're trying to imitate an artist's piece, you're always going to leave a little piece of yourself. So it's okay if yours doesn't look exactly like the artist's piece. I prefer it that way. Because you leave something of yourself. And every person's individuality is beautiful. Okay, great. Now we're gonna go back, same thing, a little bit of white. Spread in that. See how that adds a little bit more dimension? Okay. So doing this layering in this crescent stroke, this upward motion is giving us that dimension that we talked about. I think we are ready to move on to actually creating our dandelions and some of our leaf strokes. Okay, so I'm going to use this acrylic brush to start making some of the leaf strokes at the bottom. So we are gonna actually move to using some of these greens. So the first green we're going to use again is this paleo green. So put on, then I'm gonna dip some water and this at the bottom, I'm just kind of doing free strokes. It's okay if they're kind of just random and... They don't have to look all alike. Remember, in nature, grass is not all the same height. It's not um, all the same direction. It's really kind of crazy and um, misdirectional. So. Um, feel free to kind of go crazy with your grass. Now, what we're painting here at the bottom is creating a foreground. That is the very front of the, uh, the, the piece. Okay. 
Now I'm actually gonna go in with some blue. It is this pink, um, Piero blue, okay? It's kind of a ultra, um, almost like a sea blue. And we're gonna layer this in with this Piero green. Um, as you can see, they're really similar in color and tone. So I think this is gonna add a lot of dimension to this foreground. So we're gonna layer it on there. I'm not gonna add too much, but I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna boost, boost it up. We're also gonna add some lighter pieces in here and that, and some white. And that will also create some of the dimension we're looking for. Okay. Next, I'm gonna go in here with some sap green. Same thing, but I'm gonna use this in a much sparing way. And I'm kind of gonna go through and just add it on some of the edges of the blades of grass that I've already created, okay? See what I'm doing there? And this is almost creating a shadow on some of the pieces of grass. And that is creating a little bit of a 3D effect on some of them. Okay. Last but not least, I'm going to go back in with some of this um, peppermint green. Same thing, sparingly, but going back in in a light fashion on just a few of those blades of grass. Sound good? All right, you guys ready to make our actual big stems for our dandelions? I'm using a little bit of a thinner brush for this one. And you can make as many dandelions as you'd like. I'm gonna do the same as the photo and um, do three. But if you'd like to make five, six, seven, whatever you'd like, it is your piece of art. I encourage you to do what you desire. Okay, so I'm going to use for this one, I'm going to use the, um, oops, I put my brush in some white. That wasn't intended. Silly Jackie. All right, so I'm gonna use this actual um, sap green to start with. Dab some water. And I like to do different directions. Okay, so just like here, I'm gonna pull this way. Nice, long, okay. and then I'll have a shorter one here, and then I'll do another one coming this way. Maybe I'll have like a little leaf coming off here to make my piece a little different from from the actual photo. Okay. Now, just like we did with the grass, you do want to create some dimension within the stems of your dandelions. I'm going to go back in with that panto green and along the edges and just darken it up just a little bit.
On mine though, I'm gonna use a tiny, tiny bit of white instead of that peppermint green um, to uh, use as a highlight on my stems. If you'd like to use the peppermint green or a light green, go for it. I'm gonna use white this time though. Because I want my stems to stick out. See how they're a little bit more pronounced than everything else? All right. All right, awesome. Okay, now, now we get to the cool part with some Q-tips. So everyone's parents should have these around their homes for the most part. Um, most people use them for cleaning out their ears, but that's not really what they're intended for. They're actually used for, supposed to be used for like makeup and um, cleaning and things like that. Um, but we do not necessarily always use them for the best ways. Um, or at least the audiologist always scolds us for them. Okay, so you're gonna take a handful, um, like this, probably a little bit less actually, sorry. Okay, so about that much, just a small handful. And that rubber band I told you about earlier, you're gonna take it and you're gonna wrap it around the middle. Okay, so you got that here. So this is all ready now. Now, before we get started with that, we gotta paint the middles of our dandelions. So these little middles kind of look like flying saucers or little hamburgers kind of. So I'm gonna take some of that peppermint green and go and paint mine on. Um, you're gonna wake the top part I just paint the whole thing peppermint green and then I go back and add a darker part on the bottom. And you can make them different widths. Um, see like this one I made a little bit of a rounder, like this one I have being a little bit um, flatter. Um, because remember, in, in nature, all flowers and everything, um, just like people, we all look slightly different. Um, so it's okay if they're a little bit different. I'm going to go back through and I'm going to use some of that, um, Pichento green. And I'm going to add it to the bottom here. And I did a little bit on top just to create that definition. Awesome. All right. Okay, now we are ready to use, apologize, our bundle. Okay, so you have your bundle of Q-tips. You're going to take it, just dip it slightly in the water, and then you're going to dip it in your white. Take an extra paper plate and kind of dip it off and kind of get some of the excess paint off. Okay, so you can choose whichever ones you want. If you'd like to have all of your dandelions be full, great. But if you don't, you can do whichever one you would like, okay? But then you're gonna go through and you're gonna start going around to add the randomness of the 
the little, um, I want to call them puffies, but I'm sure that's not the appropriate name for them. I apologize. Okay. I think I'm going to, on my piece, make this be the dandelion that is blowing away. And don't feel, um, it's okay to go over the little um, bulb of your dandelion as well, because the puppies of the dandelion encompass all of the top of the, I want to call it a flower, but it, it's technically a weed. Okay, and if you did want to have a dandelion where that was kind of getting blown away or you had made a wish on it, just take one, dip it in a little bit of water, and you can little, little nice specks that are getting blown And that's how you create this painting. I hope you had a wonderful time watching me do this today. I sure had a great time. We here at the City of Flagstaff Parks and Recreation miss you all in Flagstaff a ton and we hope to see you all back soon at all of our programming events and sporting leagues. And please stay safe out there. Don't forget, please make sure you're washing your hands to continue to flatten the, co uh, the curve for COVID-19 and stay safe and healthy.